Okay, good morning. It's Lacey Frazier here with Whole Soul School and Foundation, and I am super excited to be here today for our next episode of Transformation Talks. And I am here with Lonnie Adams, who is here to talk with us today on our monthly theme, Self-Awareness, Integrating Shadow and Light. So welcome, Lonnie. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing great. I'm thrilled that you're here. I so appreciate it. And maybe without sort of giving away your your life story, because we're going to save that for the film we're going to make someday, um, tell me a little bit about you. Well, I'm from Durham, North Carolina, originally. I'm 64 years old. I spent 37 years in prison, 20, 26 years and 58 days in the federal prison. I'm happy to be free. And I recently received my first legal check a few months ago. (laughs) (laughs) Your first first paycheck. My first legal check. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, sorry. I should have included that word, legal paycheck. Uh, Well, not only have you received a paycheck, which indicates you have a good legal job, a good legal paycheck, (laughs) um, but you have done an amazing job reintegrating into society after after 37 years, you said? In all, but 26 years and 50, uh, 58 days in federal prison. Wow. Wow. So I, you know, I think we could have probably 150 podcast interviews about, <laughs> um, about your experiences in prison as well as your integrating back into society. Uh, and I'm, I just want you to know how happy I am for you and how proud I am of you that you have gotten out and, and you've, you, you are living a, a, what seems to be a pretty happy life and a legit life. And I think that's amazing. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes. So, but today we, you have agreed to talk a little bit with me about the concept of self-awareness. Uh, I know that you went through a program in the last couple of years of your prison sentence in fe- while you were in the federal system that uh, sounds like had a pretty big impact on, on gaining self-awareness and gaining the importance of not just kind of uh, who you are and the good positive traits that you know are inside of you, but also the importance of talking about the shadow side of you. And, you know, Whole Soul School and Foundation is all about the importance of looking at us as human beings as as an integrated whole. And yes, it'd be nice to talk about rainbows and butterflies and lollipops, all day long. But the truth is, is that we're human beings and we have shadow thoughts and we have patterns of behavior that we were taught growing up that, are, that don't serve us anymore. We have um, feelings that don't feel so good. And, and so it's really important that, and we believe at Whole Soul, that it's really important that we honor both par- all parts of ourself and that we put those shadow parts of ourselves on the table. And I know that, that looking at some of your shadow traits uh, was was pretty important for you to understand who you are as a person, for, for you to understand your past, and also for you to move forward in your life in a successful way. So I really appreciate you being willing to share a little bit about that process with us today. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to just touch base on, on kind of where you are now and, and anything I've said so far. Well... Like she just said, I went to a class, and that class allowed me to dig deep and find my authentic self. I was able to look at the dark side of my behavior or my personality, and at first when I went into the class, I was thinking that someone would judge me by that dark side. But what happened was, the more I was able to look at that dark side, I was able to see the things that I was hiding. I was able to see the things that I was lying to myself about. Um, And I was able to see the things that I really didn't want people to know because one thing, I really didn't understand myself 
why I did some of the things that I did. Well, in that class, I was amongst men who I had never been amongst before. For instance, I had never been amongst prominent people like lawyers, doctors, uh, men who had uh, high titles in military. Um, and so I had a misconception of those people being better, uh, different, and then I began to see that those people were human beings just like myself. Mm -hmm. And each one of them had shadowy side. They had dark side that they were dealing with. And at first when we went there, all of us was guarded. And so we would only tell a part of ourselves. We wouldn't open up. And so what happened was the more we began to study the dark side or we began to shine light on the dark side of our personality, the more we began to open up until we became like brothers in there and we began became vulnerable and we weren't afraid to be vulnerable and we allowed ourselves to talk to each other. And so I began to look at things, some of my shadow um, side, like um, how I, why I would get angry all the time, why I always felt like someone was attacking me. You know, things like that. Why sometimes I would fight. And I didn't understand those things. And I didn't want to understand. And then I began to shine light on those things. And I began to understand that <clears throat> they were there. They were real. And so I had to take some positiveness from them. I had to figure a way to do that. And so that class taught me to recognize that. And it taught me my triggers. What caused all of these things? And I, was, I began to reinvent myself, myself, and I began to appreciate even some of the dark aspect of myself mm. just from this class. And so it helped me to open up, to expose my vulnerability without thinking that I was vulnerable or without thinking that someone was attacking me. And so I learned quite a lot from that class. Wow, Lonnie, you know, I, I have chills. I just, I'm, I'm so moved by how you articulated all of that. Um, and I think it must have taken a tremendous amount of courage, in a sense, for somebody like you to walk into a class like that among, among the people you were with. And, and it sounds like you really learned to let down your guard as, as time went by and in this room, you you saw everybody there. You began to see everybody there as a human being, a human being with strengths and a human being with weaknesses, a human being with light, positive traits, and a human being with dark shadow. Just because somebody might have had a different education or a different skin color or a different religious belief or whatever it was from you, you really tapped in to this feeling that, there wasn't really that much that separates you from these people. And the things that did separate you uh, were just just in your mind. And so um, as you began to feel, and I'm just kind of reiterating just to make sure I understand, as you began to feel comfortable and one with this group, your armor, if, we, if you will, sort of melted away and you were free to be more vulnerable and to talk about those parts of yourself that you'd been hiding and that you'd been denying. And when you did that, you, it, I could be, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm just going to say it sounds like you almost felt stronger and freer as a person uh, once you could talk about that side of yourself that you'd been denying. Yes. Um, as you did that, as you dropped your armor, it allowed you to become human. I was able to realize that I needed to shine light on this dark side because it exposed some of the things that I had hidden. And I was able to understand it. And when you understand something, you can do something about it. When you can see it, you can do something about it. But at the time, I could not do anything about it. I couldn't explain why I did what I did because I had no idea until we put that light. And that class allowed me to put that light on these things, on this dark side. It allowed me to see it. And then I could understand and I could see it coming. And I was able to stop it 
or use it in a positive way once I had light on it. But sometimes, it, like you say, it's a dark side. Sometimes it, it creeps up on you and you don't recognize it. But when you got that flashlight on it, you see it coming. And so that's what the class was so great uh, for me. It was great for me because I felt stronger afterwards. I didn't have to keep up this shield or I didn't have to keep up this image that I was a tough guy, that uh, I wasn't afraid in prison. And then I found out that a lot of the dark side had a lot to do with fear. Mm. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, you know, a lot of times uh, guys will, uh, men, not necessarily men, but a lot of time we as men, we try to overcompensate for fear that we have. And when you're in prison, you really do it because you can't be perceived as being weak. So you may feel something, but you still try to pretend that you're not fearful. And so with that class, I was able to come out and actually say that when I went in prison, man, I was scared to death. I was scared to death, but I had never told anybody that. I'd only told gangster stories, you know, where I did this to the guy, and I stood up, and I did this. And then I began in that class, I was able to tell him, man, I was scared to death. Mm. And I felt stronger by letting people know that I was that. But I also realized that having fear did not make me weak. It made me human. Giving me chills again, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that, you know, fear often stops us from doing so many things. But when we can shine a light on it, like you say, it that light, in a way, helps neutralize the fear. It helps it kind of fall away. And then we, we, we feel empowered to do whatever we need to do in the next steps in our life. Um, one of one of the things I heard you say that I'd like to go back to a little bit is is you mentioned the word triggers, and learning about yourself, and you mentioned anger as one one of those things. Um, we've been talking uh, this month, as I say, about self awareness, and one of the things that I wrote about on my blog, and one of the things I I talked about on my latest podcast is this concept of of triggers that we all have these sort of things that happen in our environment that we interpret in a certain way and it pushes our buttons and it usually comes out of patterning that we've had growing up in our life um, and so I didn't know if there was any and I don't want to put you on the spot if, so if there's nothing that comes to mind don't worry about it but is uh, is there any one thing that that you really you recognized in yourself as a trigger and that through this program and through your own self-awareness, you were able to kind of neutralize that trigger so it doesn't impact you much anymore? Well, I think, and let me say this, I'm a very short guy, very small statured guy. And so one of the things is anybody that was over five feet four that said something to me, they triggered this, uh, this defense thing or an offensive uh, role that I had to take. Because I'm taking, I'm taking it like, you're attacking me. If you were just half an inch taller than me, I took it as, uh, you know, you was attacking. And so in the class, I learned differently. I learned that I didn't have to look at the size of a guy and think that he was always attacking me. But that really would, would, would trigger me. And I took that as an attack. It didn't matter what color, or who you were, it just mattered that you was a couple of inches or half an inch taller than me. Mm. And uh, really, that was one of my triggers. I always feel like you were taking advantage of me or you was trying to belittle me or you were disrespecting me. And so I learned that was um, one of my triggers. Size had something to do with it. And also the tone of a person's voice. Uh, I could raise my voice, but if you raise your voice back, I assumed that you were attacking me. So I learned in class, you know, to allow people to be who they are. And just because the guy raised his voice don't mean he's attacking me. Some people have loud voices. What could I do about that? So those mm-hmm. excellent examples. Uh, the the one the example about being triggered by people kind of taller than you or bigger than you. I would imagine that you've learned that 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 
it wasn't really about them, was it? It was more about you and how you felt about yourself. Absolutely. And so if you felt not enough, less than, because you were a smaller man, it made you feel like you needed to act tough, protective, bigger, more defensive, uh, because otherwise you felt vulnerable. Right. I felt... uh I learned it was about my interpretation of someone else's action. Exactly. So it was your, it was you. My perception. Yes. My perception, how I perceived what they did. And when I learned better, actually I had very little problems after that because I stopped, uh, you know, it's kind of like sometimes we have myths and we believe certain things until we learn better. And once you learn better, you react better. And the same thing with that. I had a perception, but it was my reality. It wasn't theirs. It was the way I looked at it. And once I learned how to look at it better, then I responded better. Excellent example of that. Um, You talk about the story. It's kind of like the story you told yourself. You t- we tell ourselves stories, and you told yourself a story about your size, and you assigned a lot of beliefs about that. And and because of those beliefs, you had to take on a much different persona, it sounds like. Correct. Um, and I imagine especially when you walked into prison. Correct. Uh, so which has been the majority of your life. Um, Correct. Well, so thank you for sharing sharing that. Just, just the fact that you could share that, you know, on a podcast just shows incredible growth and wisdom. And the other piece of that is that I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it wasn't just you shifting a perspective about yourself and the perspective about others as far as size and everything. But you were also at the same time embracing some kind of wisdom within yourself. You were starting to learn to love you for you. No matter how tall you were, no matter what color you are, what religion you are, there was something that you were starting to own within yourself, it sounds like. And by taking responsibility and owning who you are and appreciating who you are um, and your talents and your strengths, right, um, that was all happening at the same time that you were shifting perspective about others. So all of this kind of was a recipe for creating a different reality. Yes, it was. Okay. It was. I was able to study uh, myself and study this, my strength and my weakness simultaneously. And I was able to pull something out of both. Yes. And I was able to um, more or less look at myself in a different light. I began to stop judging myself based on uh, size, color. Uh, and things like that. And I began to increase my moral compass. I began to look deep within myself and realize that I was creating my own reality by how I was interpreting things. And the more I learned how to interpret things in a more positive light, the better I thought I became. And it helped me with my transition in prison, and it helped me with my transition even now where I'm gainfully or legally employed, (laughs) you know, because when a lot of things happen uh, where I work at, at a transitional house now, things happen, I look at it different. I interpret it different. And I know that people, all of us have some similar issues. You know, and I realize we are all human beings. No one is better than the next person. We just have different issues. We interpret it and we react different to our issues. And I thank the class. I really thank the class tremendously for allowing me to, you know, be vulnerable, allowing me to be expressive, allowing me to share my vulnerability. And it helped me. It strengthened me. It empowered me. And it made me a much better person. Would you say, Lonnie, that that shining a light on on the shadow was a core, one of those core things that you learned that changed you? 
Absolutely. You cannot get better. Like you said, if you're only looking at the good, then you never understand the bad. You need both. There has to be balance there. There has to be balance. You wouldn't know what is good if you didn't know something was bad. And so, yes, absolutely. When I began to uh, study the bad, it made me better. It made me understand Mm -hmm. what better was. You know, so absolutely, I think anyone um, with wisdom understand that there is good and there is bad. And you need to understand both in order to grow. How do you think you do you? I'm curious as to if you talk to people now, I mean, just in your interactions with people in everyday life, whether that's in your in your job as a residential counselor or with family, um, do you do you stress the importance of this? And can you can you I guess my question is really, do you feel like you have a, a new view of humanity and do you read people differently because of this work you've done on yourself? I think I do. I think I read people differently because what I don't do is I don't project myself onto them. You know, that's the most important thing. I don't, I try not to judge quickly. Um, and I try to listen more than ever before without passing judgment. A lot of time we say we listen. I'll tell you, I really believe that listening is a skill. Absolutely. It's a skill. Yeah. And I say that because a lot of time people began to talk to you and you already have formulated your opinion, your judgment, uh, your side, everything before they even get their story to you. So I've learned to listen a lot more. I've learned that people have their own ways of interpreting things and it don't necessarily make them wrong. That's their reality. I don't know their past. I don't know their history. So who am I to automatically begin to interpret what they say, you know, uh, in a negative way? So now when I talk to people, I listen more. And I, and I know this. I'll tell you something happened recently. I found myself, as one of my dark uh, side was, <laughs> a, a buddy of mine said, you fall up under the rescue syndrome. I felt like I could fix everything. And that's not true. That's not true. Do you mean when you came out of prison and you had kind of this renewed... Well, not only that, Before, even before I came into prison, even when I was in the illegal aspect of my life, I began to believe falsely that I could fix everything. And then when I went to the classes and I began to understand that, no, we have to fix some things you have to fix yourself. No one can fix And I had to learn that. And so when I got out, I found myself, and that's the thing, the most important lesson I learned is you have to keep your guards up at all times. You have to keep your armor up a little bit because you'll find yourself slipping back into old patterns of behavior. And so I had to go back and catch myself, oh, you can't fix that. And I would tell people now, listen, only you can fix that. And I don't feel bad. I used to feel bad when I couldn't fix it. But now I don't feel bad when I can't fix it. I just tell the person, you have discussed your problem. You know your issues. You know the answer. Because most of the time when you talk to people, they already have answers. And all you have to do is just tell them, look, okay, how do you fix this? How do you fix this? Not how do I fix this? Yes. Yes. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna put on my psychology hat here a minute. And it, it, it you tell me if I'm on base. But I wonder if that rescue syndrome that you've had in your life prior to prison and going into prison was actually part of your shadow side in the sense that you you felt maybe because of your stature or for whatever reason you had to prove something to people and so if you could help rescue somebody then you felt better about yourself and so rescuing somebody was more about feeling better about yourself at the time and and now you realize that that with all of this new wisdom and the way you've shifted your life and, and your belief system, you are now empowering people. You're not rescue them you're not rescuing them. You don't need to rescue them. You're whole unto yourself. You don't need to make yourself feel better because you you really 
love yourself now. You care about yourself now. You want to do right by yourself. So there isn't a need to rescue someone else to feel better about yourself. You can now help empower them to solve their own problems. Yeah, I think that is putting it in a nutshell. And I also think that um, when I grew up, my mom, I see my mom and family in situations where I, I wanted to rescue them. I, I needed, I thought that I needed to rescue them. And so as I got bigger, far as older, mm-hmm. I didn't get much bigger. <laughs> Not too much. But anyway, uh, I felt like, <clears throat> okay, now I'm in a position that I can rescue people. At least I thought I could. And so I think I may have went to the extreme with that. And so um, after I went through the class, I studied certain things and I talked to certain people. And then I began to understand that we can all fix ourselves. Uh, Whatever we believe in, um, whatever we call the supreme being or nature or whatever we call it, we have been instructed that we have been given all the tools. All we have to do is use it wisely. And there's not a situation we can't get out of if we just use those tools properly. I think those are very powerful words, Lonnie, and I think a lot of people listening would certainly applaud you for the journey that you've taken the initiative and the willingness and the courage to change your life and to change how you view the world and view yourself. But I'm curious as to what kind of maybe advice or guidance you would give other people who are struggling or who you see are looking to be rescued or you see are, um, are, don't, aren't taking their power back to solve their own issues. How would you talk to them? How would you guide them in that? Well, like you said, that dark side, that shadowy side must be explored. You must ask yourself, why do I do what I do? You must take a light and shine it on that. Because if you get the light on that, then it will guide you to come to the light. All you have to do is take time out and see what issues you are struggling with. And you ask yourself, why am I struggling with that? And you really take it like a book. You fold those issues, you open them up, and you look at them truthfully and say to yourself, what can I do? What can I do to correct these issues? And I think once a person um, make up their mind that the ball is in my hand, then I think he'll be okay if he start doing things wisely. And if you think it's going to be easy, no, it's not going to be easy because it wasn't easy for you to get where you are now. So you must have patience with yourself most of all And a lot of time we have patience with other people, but we don't have the proper patience with ourselves. So my advice would be study that shadowy side of yourself. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Seek help from those that you can. But most of all, get help from yourself because the tools are there. You've been born with those tools. All you have to do it's learn how to skillfully use them. I, I'm this. I'm tempted to end things here because it is such a, a, a perfect summary and ending. But I also want to ask you. I think I want to take it back to the concept of of judgment, um, and this may take us down another track for a few more minutes. But I think it's really important. You mentioned several times. The notion of judgment, your judgment of other people and how other people are so quick to judge. And I think I think learning about non-judgment or judging less is so important. And it sounds like you feel like that was a big part of 
how you took the steps that you took to feel comfortable in the class, to open up, and then to change your life. And now in everyday life, you make it a point to judge, not judge quickly, and hopefully not judge at all. But we're human, so judgments slip in there. But can you talk a little bit about the role of judgment and how it may, number one, as a shadowy trait, judgment can really uh, impede our relationships with other people and our relationship with ourself and even our relationship with God or a higher power. Uh, so how does judgment play a role in your own learning experience about yourself, do you think? Well, I think one of the things about judgment is, like you said, in the shadowy side is we tend to judge people without realizing that those very things that we are judging them about is probably it's in us. And once you recognize that a lot of time those things that you're judging people, uh, other people about, that thing is deeply ingrained in yourself. And once you expose yourself or shine light or look at your authentic self, then you'll realize you're really talking about yourself when you're judging other people. And when you realize that, you won't be so quick to judge people. Mm -hmm. You'll guard your tongue after that. Because you notice most people who talks about people, they really are sometimes uh, showing traits of themselves. Like they say, well, she's nosy. She, she talks too much. Normally, it's them that has those traits. You know, if you really look at it, or they can't be trusted. Maybe it's a trait in you, yourself, that can't be trusted. So you have to be kind of slow to judge, like, this, like she said. We are human beings. We're going to judge. But you have to be real, real, real slow. And the first thing you do, you judge yourself. Ask yourself, why am I judging that person? Why am I judging? And if I do judge them, is it for their good? Or is it something positive? Because you have to be careful with judgment. I tell you this, judgment can help hurt people too. It can hurt a lot of people. And you don't want yourself to be judged sometime by the same rule of judgment that you use on others. Mm. So you have to be real careful. And with my growth, I try to not judge. But again, as she said, we are human. But I try to be slow in judging. <clears throat> you know, I think that we did a recent podcast for Whole Soul School and Foundation on self-awareness. And um, we talked a little bit about, about judgment and how I, what I hear, what you're saying is that if you can pay attention and be self-aware when you are judging others and you are committed to self-awareness and learning about yourself, you will start to realize that when you judge others, you really, that should be a clue as to something you need to be looking at in yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for that. That's a, a really important tool, I think, that anybody on the path to self-awareness can use. You know, self-awareness is, is, the path to self-awareness is a real journey. Um, We've talked at Whole Soul School and Foundation about our conditioning growing up through our childhood, the influences of, of our environment, people in our lives, the ego identity that we develop, the story we begin to tell ourselves, the armor and the defenses that we create. And it isn't until we can start to turn and, and commit, have a willingness to commit to understand ourselves better, to become more self-aware that, that we really start to like learn learn about ourselves it's like we turn to ourselves we look in the mirror and we see a stranger and we say wait I want to get to know you better and then we've got to figure out how am I going to get to know you better and so we need to be asking people for feedback we need to be listening better like you said we can learn so much about ourselves through listening and so much about other people through listening and then also by practicing non-judgment present moment awareness all of these things will enhance uh, our, our understanding of ourselves. 
And once we understand ourselves better, like you said, we learn to love ourselves. And once we understand ourselves and we love ourselves, boy, we are going to walk through the world in a very, very different way. And that's what it sounds like you have have done, uh, is, is you have really shifted how you are walking through this world. I'm doing my best. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can see it and I can feel it and I'm overjoyed to know you. And um, I just think it's it's really wonderful how how you decided to sort of pivot in your life and understand yourself better because you you really are a very special person and a very wise person. And uh, I am certainly grateful to know you. I'm grateful you took the time out of your day to, to talk with me. And I know we will have many more of these kind of discussions, um, Lonnie. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I just want to remind all of our listeners that you can tune in to this podcast and other, other interviews through Whole Soul School and Foundation's YouTube channel. In addition to please go to our, our landing page uh, and subscribe so you can get notified of what we're doing at Whole Soul. Uh, also, when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will automatically get the notifications of these in- interviews. Uh, and also know that we are going to be launching our formal website where everything will be under one umbrella uh, at the hopefully the end of March, which we're really, really excited about. Uh, of course, I can't completely end the podcast without asking uh, everybody out there to consider a donation to Whole Soul School and Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, all donations are tax deductible under the law, and it just kind of helps us helps us keep the lights on but but really it helps us with our mission which is to bring this knowledge and wisdom and experience from from people of all walks of life to a place where uh, people can connect into it and it's free and uh, it's really there's a goal of enhancing the self and enhancing humanity as a collective so um, so thank you again Lonnie thank Thank you thank you to our listeners And uh, until next time.